All right, so yes, update 107 is now live, but Nexon also posted this right here in official tease about our upcoming brand new Descendant for season one. Check it out. The new Descendant is armed with cold fury and ready to strike. What do you think is her greatest strategy? Well, I'm assuming it's this big rocket launcher she's holding on to. By the way, I should clarify, it could be a sniper rifle, rocket launcher, I'm speculating, but we have this right here. It's giving these vibes for sure. So I'm thinking it's a pretty heavy weapon and it should be a lot of fun to actually play as this brand new Descendant. Now also with update 107 comes a brand new blog post. It is very long winded. We're gonna go over the most important details here because there's some changes here that you guys are going to absolutely love. So we're going to dive into that right now, actually. And yeah, later in the video, I will be going over your top comments as always. So yes, let's get into this, starting out with, you guessed it, content improvement. So it says this, if you do not select abort or continue during an interim review in special operations, abort will be selected automatically. Now, they lowered the difficulty of mechanics in the hard intercept battle Frost Walker. But what exactly did they do? So number one, destroying frenzied parts will now generate two embers. Number two, increase the maximum threshold of the frenzy gauge, reducing the number of times the Colossus becomes frenzied. Now, number three, when using slug shots to frenzied Colossus, its leg movements will be reduced, making it easier to aim at its weak points. Now, characters will no longer receive damage when they are in a hazardous area once the void intercept battle ends. And when Molten Fortress is defeated, the lava on the ground is now removed immediately. When Swamp Walker is defeated, the disease status effect is also removed immediately. Now, the restart function of Void Intercept Battles, Special Operations, and Infiltration Operations is now separated into two types, Start with the Current Squad and Restart Mission. The time available for Start with the Current Squad is also increased to 60 seconds. Here's some director's comments, by the way. The restart function has been separated to restart mission and start with the current squad, as you can see right here. Start with this current squad lets you begin the match with the squad who joined your last intercept battle or infiltration operation. If you want to quickly begin a new match without others, you can select restart mission. There is no time limit for selecting restart mission, so you can restart the mission at your leisure as you collect and open Emma Forest materials. Now, the display animation for Emma Forest materials when using a reconstructing device has been simplified, letting you quickly check the materials. That is so nice. Uh, now, for the field, it says in the Echo Swamp Derelict Covert Void Fragment, toxic monsters will now spawn faster. Now, the HP of monsters in Void Fusion Reactors has been reduced, and they will now drop more ammo and recovery orbs when you defeat them. You guys have been requesting more ammo constantly, so hopefully that alleviates that situation a little bit. We'll find out. What about the battle pass? It says we identified an issue where the requirements for the battle pass week six challenge wouldn't it hurt more if my rifle fired harder. We're not met retroactively. We changed the requirements to enhance rifling reinforcements to level three. Now they also reduce the difficulty of weekly challenges for battle pass week seven and eight also increasing the amount of reward experience and supply coins. Here are some director's comments as well as week six of the preseason in soon, we noticed that the completion rate of battle supply shop was lower than expected. This was due to the fact that the season challenges required everyone to do a lot of grinding. To remedy this, the dev team has come up with two changes. First, we lowered the difficulty of weekly challenges for week seven and eight, which are planned to begin on August 15th also increasing the rewards. Now, the amount of supply coins that you can earn from completing all week seven and eight challenges will be increased, and you will get to receive rewards from the battle supply shop that you couldn't receive before. You'll be able to enjoy more battle supply shop rewards by completing weekly challenges during the remaining period. Now, second, we're currently in the process of adjusting the difficulty of season one challenges based on our experience with the preseason. Compared to the preseason, you will be able to complete challenges more naturally as you farm items, reducing the burden of additional grinding. We're also in the process of increasing the value of rewards you can get from the battle passes. So that's good to know that they're learning from preseason. That is such good news to hear that they're willing to make some adjustments based on that. And we've got some changes to the UI. It says when selecting all additional options in hard infiltration operations, all the options will remain selected even if you change the additional options. Now, grappling hook disabled and jump disabled from the list of additional options can be selected in hard infiltration operations has been removed. 
You can now check the tooltip of Amma Four's material icons in the chain selectable reward screen in hard infiltration operations. Now, some director's comments about this one. As your character becomes stronger, more and more people have been choosing additional options over 200% in hard infiltration operations. However, if you choose additional options as you cannot begin matchmaking, it becomes difficult as you have to gather party members on chat and communities instead. Therefore, we're currently trying to improve our matchmaking system so you can easily play together even if you even when, excuse me, you select additional options, specifically additional options will be changed to presets and you will be able to gather a party depending on the percentage of presets you choose. Furthermore, to increase the matchmaking pool, we're planning to allow everyone to enter an infiltration operation together, no matter which amaphorous material they choose. We're also planning to change the mission in hard infiltration operations from occupation to extermination we hope you enjoy co-op more easily and experience fast and exciting combat and farming these changes for hard infiltration operations will be applied in season one so it sounds like pretty good changes right there as well now tooltips those tooltips for equipment now show up faster equipment option tiers are now displayed on the icon set effects for external components are now displayed on the icon they gave give some examples here uh as you could see it says as you could see from the screenshot above, the option tiers of firearms, reactors, and external components are now displayed on the icon. Check that out. That is not too shabby at all. This improvement was made so that when you farm reactors and external components that have great options, you can easily identify what the items are worth in the inventory. While not included in Hotfix 107, we're also preparing additional quality of life features that can help you farm more easily. For instance, you will be able to assign different symbols to the attached items. The junk filter will also let you filter items with specific options as junk. The dev team is hard at work at making your farming experience easier. Love it. All these changes look absolutely fantastic. The game is only getting better, clearly. Now, next up, it says this. In the module acquisition info, you can now check whether a module can be acquired by combining the modules that can only be acquired by combining our hardline suppression shot focus, and shield collector. In the consumables menu of the library, you can now see the amount of consumables you currently have and receiving all lost and found items. If there is not enough inventory space, you can now only receive items in according to the remaining space. Now, when the unique abilities of an ultimate weapon permanently change the weapon's default performance, you can now check the changes on the basic info screen. All of this is gonna be super helpful. What about changes to our descendants? So it says this, fix the amount of recovery displayed on the skill tooltip for Eugen so that it matches the improvements made on his recovery mount in Hotfix 106. By overhauling the formula of Eugen's recovery skill, the amount of recovery has been slightly increased for skill level four. Now you can gain weapon proficiency when you defeat an enemy with a unique weapon, for example, Luna's stage presence. Now you can also acquire Luna's noise surge modification module in the hard intercept battle executioner. Here's some comments about that one. Try using Luna and her noise surge to increase weapon proficiency, defeat enemies with the sound of music, and fall for her charm. They really want you guys trying out Luna. Now, it says this, improved AMD frame generation for PS5, Xbox Series X, and Xbox Series S, and changed the name of support droid to support drone. Okay, that's an interesting one. Was it necessary? I don't know. Then there are some other bug fixes here. I'm not going to read over all of those, but the descendants are the most important thing here. It says fix an issue where... Bunny's thrill bomb skill did not hit nearby enemies when she was equipped with high voltage. They also addressed an issue when Luna danced while holding her gun when she used an enhanced skill with the noise surge module. They also addressed an issue with Luna's facial graphics and then fixed an issue where Sharon couldn't can't, could excuse me cancel her skill uh, even after she fired her flash short sword skill during ending motions. They also addressed an issue where equipping a range module would not change the skill description for ultimate lapik and lapik's traction grenade and then they address an issue where equipping a range module would not expand the effects of lapik's traction grenade as well now some changes to equipment modules or some fixes i should say they fix an issue where the display of firearm critical hit rate was switched with the skill critical hit rate in four piece set of Effect tooltip for the external component acrobat set effects. Now, and there's a bunch of other fixes here. I'm not going to read through every single one of them, but I did want to note some of the stuff going on in hard mode and hard missions and stuff. So it says fix an issue where being tasked with collection for the fortress infiltration operations quarantine zone and heart of the fortress with a four member party could intermittently cause a champion monster 
to not spawn, making it impossible to acquire the balanced plasma battery. So if you've been avoiding that, you don't have to avoid that anymore. Hop back into that one. Now increase the monster's kill score for the infiltration operation, the Haven, fix an issue where it was impossible to reach a perfect score even when increasing options to 240%. Now they also address an issue in hard infiltration operation, unknown laboratory, where a player reaching a no resurrection zone in advance could cause other players to not teleport to the no resurrection zone. So that has been addressed. And they also address an issue where a melee enemy would intermittently stop moving and not pursue players. And then some other issues here for PC specifically, they address an issue using certain skills would glitch the screen when the NVIDIA reflex boost mode was enabled. And again, yes, the tease to our brand new descendant. So who is she? I am very curious. Already we're getting a brand new descendant. So yeah, they're already giving us some new content, which is super exciting. All right, time to head over to my previous video and take a look at your comments. So remember, leave a comment down below. It could end up right here in a future video. So let's do this. So here's the first one. They need to be extremely cautious with any nerfs. Look at Helldivers 2, nerf after nerf, and the player base has declined because of it. Yeah, I've seen what has happened with that game, and it is just shocking. Such a bummer. Hell, they even nerfed the damn flamethrower. <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking over there, but I am sure, or at least hope, that Nexon is really paying attention to this stuff. I know a lot of you are kind of like a little bit worried about what they could potentially do with season one bounces and changes there. Uh, it seems like they are not interested in nerfing characters at all. They want to like raise up other characters, but also make some adjustments with new modules perhaps related to new mechanics that are introduced with the new season. That's what it seems like they're going for. We'll wait for official word with what's going on there, but I think they know for a fact that nerfing would be a big no-no for sure. Now, we have this one. Asking for nerfs in a PvE game is wild to me. Every character has their pros and cons, and there will be characters that excel in certain areas more than others. This is healthy, yes. There are some underperforming, underperformers, excuse me, and they should be brought up to snuff, and I have yet to come across a situation where I felt like something was too good, aside from the occasional bug like the Kyle nuke. Bunny is a mobber and is the best at her craft, she does not excel in bossing and is a glass cannon just because she kills the trash mobs before you can shoot at them doesn't mean she needs a nerf. Yeah, it seems like that's kind of what Nexon was going for, that every descendant would truly have a unique purpose. And it seems like the community overall, from what I have seen, really, really likes that. Now, also, we have this one right here. Auto dismantle system might be a great feature. Couldn't agree more. Leave Bunny alone. She lost her parents. Yeah, damn, stop going after Bunny so much. Now it says this, there needs to be no nerfs to Bunny. I personally enjoy OP Bunnies on my team. They help speed up the grind for items. Yeah, exactly. When the most efficient farmer is given to you for free at the start of the game, you just don't complain. Don't bite the hands that feed you. Yeah, you know, it seems like the assessment is leave Bunny the hell alone. The community is pretty chill about how Bunny is performing currently. And yeah, we'll see how Bunny fares, by the way. This is what I'm really curious about when those mega dungeons come out. Because people that are saying, hey, nerf Bunny, aren't going to be saying that, I'm sure, when the mega dungeons release. So that's what I'm assuming Bunny is really geared up for. And then they will potentially give us unique modules for other descendants that will raise them up, prepping us for the mega dungeon. All right, so there it is. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned here. For more, the first Ascendant, as always, I have you guys covered, and I will see you all next time. Take care.